So this here is gonna be a painting video for Rubric Marines. We've got uh, a set of them here we wanna paint up and uh, this is how they turned out. So if you have some rubrics to do or if you're just bored and you wanna watch a video, uh, stay tuned and we'll show you exactly how we painted these guys up. Uh, if you uh, like videos like this or if you've enjoyed them in the past, please feel free to leave a like or subscribe to the channel uh, or leave a comment down below. We tend to respond to as many comments as we can. And otherwise than that, stay tuned and we'll show you how we painted up the rubrics that you see in front of you. So this here's our painting video for our rubric Marines. And the first thing we did with them is we base coated them with Retributor Armor Spray. So we use the spray can here. Now the other option you could do is you could just prime them in gray and then paint them with the Retributor Armor. Either way works. Uh, you might want to use the Retributor Armor for touch-ups in case there are areas that the paint didn't get to, um, such as down and inside the armor and things like that. There are some that we spray painted, base coated, that did get missed a little bit on the edge here. So we're gonna touch all those up with Retributor Armor and then be back in a few minutes. So now that we've finished our base coat, we've got the, a nice uniform Retributor Gold on. What we're gonna do first is add a shade and that'll bring out some of the, some of the details of that gold. So we're gonna take some Seraphim Sepia, which is gonna create a nice warm gold and we're just going to apply it all over the model. Just like so. And that'll bring out some of the detail on the gold, as well as make it a nice warm color, as you can see there. So we'll keep going with this, and we'll be back in a few minutes once it's all dry, and the details will be brought out, and uh, then we'll see how it looks. So this here's our model, now that we've finished with the Seraphim Sepia. And as you can say, see, the shade has uh, really warmed up the gold, as well as drawing out some of the detail. And you can see it more if you compare it to an unshaded model, such as this one here. As you can see, the one on the uh, right is much more uh, reddish orange color. There's, there's far more detail. There's a little bit of pooling on the high points, such as on this uh, wing on the helmet here, but that'll get cleaned up when we put the highlight layer on now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a highlight layer of Liberator Gold which is considerably brighter. And we're gonna dry brush that right over the top. So get a brush that doesn't matter anymore because it is gonna destroy it. And all you're gonna do is wipe it off on your hand or wipe it off on a cloth. And then when you have just a trace left, just dry brush that right over the high points very lightly. And what you're gonna do is light that armor back up, uh, bringing the gold forward so it really, really shines. So this is our model that we finished with the Liberator Gold. And as you can see, we've really, really brightened it up quite a bit. So from here, what we're gonna do is start adding the blue color. So we're gonna take a little bit of appropriately named Thousand Suns Blue, and we're gonna start doing with a very detailed brush, all of the parts that are gonna be blue. So basically anything that isn't gonna be gold on the armor, we're probably gonna do most of the inside of this uh, shield here, and we'll come through and overlay yellow afterwards. We're gonna do all of the inside of all the intricate details on the armor, including the legs down here, and the spaces, the um, the guards on the shins, as well as the, the backpacks here, and then all the details on the backpack, and then on some of the shields here on the back end, we're going to do all of that with our Thousand Suns Blue, just picking out the details and being careful not to overwrite the gold. So we'll do that now and be back in a few minutes once that's all finished. So this is our model that we finished with the Thousand Suns Blue. And as you can see, it came out pretty nice. We kept our best to uh, maintain the lines and the edges around. And it took quite a bit of time for each model to do all the blue. It took about... 30 minutes, 30, 45 minutes each model, depending on how much detail was in between the legs and things like that. It is definitely a time consuming process and probably the longest part of this paint for the model. But in any case, that's now finished. 
And so with that, we'll move on to our next color. And we're gonna do the yellow stripes on the, the helmet ridge up here. So what we're gonna do with those is we're gonna take a little bit of Everland Sunset. And then again with some Uriel Yellow. And between the two of those, we'll put a base and a highlight on each one of these lines here. Every second line to create our grid pattern. So we'll do that now and we'll be back in a few minutes once all that's done. We're gonna do the helmet as well as any arms, any banding there. Some of the legs will have some stripes like this in the back. So we'll do some of those. But any place where we have these stripes, we will put the yellow lines and be back in a few minutes once that's all finished. So this is our model now that we've finished with the first Averland Sunset. So as you can see, we did the stripes on the head crests as well as on the back of the legs here and the backpacks and things like that. So we've got most of that finished. Now what we're gonna do here is after the Averland, like we said, we're gonna take a Uriel yellow or something brighter you can see the two-tone there. And we're just gonna put a little tiny dry line right along the edge of some of those stripes, just to make that jump out at you so it, it gives you a 3D effect and it just draws your eyes there more. So we're gonna do that now and be back here in just a few minutes. So here's a model now that we finished with the two-tone yellow. And as you can see, we did the top little bit here now which is a very light detail brush just to touch along the top. So that finishes up our yellow. So now we have a couple of choices to move on to. We'll probably do metallics next. So that'll be sort of a little mixture of lead belcher and then probably a light brush of iron breaker. We'll probably add a little bit of noon oil as well just to add some shade in between. So what we're looking to do with those metallics are things like the barrel of the gun right here, as well as all of these uh, coils here on the back, on the backpack here, as well as the aerator co uh, coils here leading into the helmet. Uh, some of the models will have a little grill in the helmet front here like this model here who has a little one right inside the front there. So a few places there on the um, larger cannon, we'll probably do all the barrels of the cannon as well. So we'll hit kind of those spots too. And then of course the coils and all that again. So we'll do all that now and be back here in just a few minutes uh, when we're all finished that. So this is our model now that we finished with the lead belcher, Newell oil, and then iron breaker. So we did the barrel of the gun, as you can see. And then on the back, we did some of these coils. So they stand out quite nicely now. And then on some of the other models. You see the barrel of the gun is nice and shiny now, as well as coils on the back and so forth. And then on all of the models that have this skull type of uh, backpack, we did a dry brush of the Iron Breaker on there just to sort of blend the two colors and sort of add some more depth to that as well. So we did the same thing on this guy here. So now that we finished with the metallics, we're gonna move on to another color. And so what we're gonna do this time is start working on the blacks uh, and the dark grays. So we're gonna do black sort of on the um, on the gun here, as well as some behind the armor and the joints, like so. We'll probably do the base as well. And then what we'll do is come over with the black. We'll use Abaddon black for that. And then probably a layer of Eschen gray, and then a dry brush of Dawnstone. So using those three, We'll sort of do the, the back here and then just that light dry brush of the lighter colors just to um, give it some depth again. So here's our model now that we finished with the black into the gray. And as you can see, we've done the bolters here as well as the base. And then we did in behind each of the armors here, 
where the joints are and we've dry brushed that a little lighter. So you definitely see that uh, accordion type pattern there where the armor would bend. So for our next section, what we're gonna do is we're going to do the tabards here in front of the models. So we're gonna match them to the Infernal Master we did earlier. We'll link that in the uh, at the end on the end cards and we'll put a link in the description down below. But the same thing we did for that, we're gonna do for this model. So it's gonna be another sort of series of paints. We're gonna put a base of Rackarth Flesh down and then probably a shade of Seraphim Sepia. And then we'll probably do a layer of Screaming Skull uh, over the top of that and then finally after we finish with those three we'll probably add a little bit of white scar to polish that right up so we'll do those slowly starting with the rack earth flesh and be back in a minute once that's done so here's our model that we finished with the rack earth flesh so we did the cloak here the uh, the tabard in front and then we, of course, did the other side of it, which is back here. So we got both of those parts. And we did the same on all the other models, with the exception of the sorcerer that came with the group. Because with that one, we had more to do, of course. With that one, we did the tabard in the front, same as before. As well as these two other uh, ribbons that come off the side. We did the handle of the staff. And then we did the inside of the cape here as well which is why we didn't attach them to the base already. So we got that done, and now we're ready for our next level, uh, and that's gonna be a shade over the top. So we're just gonna take our model with our shade and just coat it right in there. There we go. We'll try to push it down into the grooves. So that'll pull down into the little grooves there. And then as it dries, We'll, uh, we'll come back with some highlights over the top. So here's our model now that we finished with the Seraphim Sepia and we let it dry and that's filled in some of these darker grooves here. And just as a heads up, what we actually did was we let it dry in this direction and that allowed it to pool down in and below um, in, the, in the recesses here. We did it for all the other models as well. And as you can see, it pooled comfortably in these grooves here and then it really helped the um, the gold trim to pop out which is we're going to come in handy later so what we're ready to do now is put a little dry brush over the top of that really really light and of that we're going to use some screaming skull so what we're going to do with the screaming skull is we're going to brush it really really light until there's very little left on the brush and then once that's the case and we're just gonna dry brush it across the tabard here, picking up the high points and blending that in. So we'll do that very slowly over the next while, bringing in that color and we'll meet back here again when it's done. So here's our model now that we finished with the Screaming Skull. And so as you can see, it's much brighter than it was a second ago. So we've really, really kind of dry brushed that and cleaned it all up. And so what we're going to do now is move on to the last one, which is White Scar. And you'll see there's a notable difference between those two colors. Which means that we'll have to go even drier for our dry brush on that. But it'll really make the white stand out. So we'll do some of that now and be back here in a few minutes once um, all the white scar is done. So this here's our champion model. So he's got a few extra things going for him that the other ones didn't have. So we'll have to deal with him a little bit more detail now. So uh, one of the things he's got are these uh, Oath of Moments here, these um, 
wax seals or whatever you want to call them on here. We're going to treat them as wax seals. So we're going to make them sort of a purplish waxy color. Um, so we're going to start with a screaming skull here and then probably shade a pink horror over the top. We're going to do the same thing for the entire cloak here if we can. And then we're also going to do the strap on the, um, on the scroll that we've got here with the same idea. So we're going to do those three things and come back when it's a nice purple color or, or pinkish color, dark rose. So we're going to use these two colors here, Screamer Pink as a background and then Pink Horror as a layer over the top just for a highlight. And we'll do that and be back here in a few minutes just to see how he turns out. So here's our rope now that we finish with the Screamer Pink and then the Pink Horror over the top. And as you can see, we've got a nice highlight on that ridge and it's not a lighting thing. It doesn't matter how I turn the, the model, that light uh, ridge is still there. So that'll finish off the cloak. So all we have to do is put that gold trim back on, which we'll use with a detail brush. And we'll just very, very delicately go through here, cleaning that up and making that pop out. And then we'll probably, once the robe is finished, uh, mount him back onto the base. And then we'll go on from there uh, for just the top of the staff. So we'll do that now and be back in a few minutes. So after a little bit of trial and error, I think we finally came up with the pattern uh, color scheme for the the eye of Zeech on the top of the staff. So what we see here is what we're going to go with. And so what that is technically is we took a base coat of Gauss Blaster Green and then added a watered down layer of Talisar Blue over the top of it. And then that got us sort of the, the look that we've got there. So we've already gone ahead and put the Gauss Blaster Green on the other side. And we're just gonna put the Talisar Blue on and kind of show you what we did. So treating it just like a normal contrast paint, we basically put one thick coat on. Then we, because we wanted to keep that Gauss Blaster Green in the center, we used a little bit of water. To wash up the center a little bit, which drove the contrast paint into the corners. And then as that dries, you'll get the appearance we've got there. So we'll leave that dry for now. We'll do the rest of the, the little uh, eyes and zeech all over the place with uh, Gauss Blaster Green. And we'll be back in a few minutes once all of that is done and dry. So this here's our model now that we finished with both basing as well as all the rest of the fine details. So this is pretty much the finished product. And we'll have some more photos after this of the other models uh, together so you can see all the different styles. So we're pretty happy with the way this turned out. And if you stayed viewing this long, we thank you for watching. Uh, if you'd like the videos like this and you enjoyed this one, please leave a like or a comment or subscribe to the channel. That'd be great. And otherwise, from that, we will see you at our next painting video. Um, thank you for watching and you have a wonderful afternoon.